We are world champions. And then the moment where it's done, everything is gone. Nobody can take that away from me ever. I think it's great how you go beyond your own limits. It's a minute to midnight. We're running out of time. It was time to uh, to take it another approach to life. And I wanted to have a, a different life um, and experience more of a freedom. Okay. Monaco, Nico Hosberg's home. Formula One world champion, environmentalist, businessman, and Monacan at heart. So a very close relationship to Monaco because I've lived here all my life. Um, my school is just on the other side of the mountain here in the harbor, um, where my kids also go to school now. I mean, uh, this city is all about my previous life as well because the Monaco racetrack is in the middle of the city. It's on my way to school. You cross the start-finish line here. Um, and you can see the, the line painted, of course, on the ground and you see all the starting grids here. So pole position is coming there. And then sometimes I get these flashbacks and think about how the whole city is transformed. And then I was on pole position here a couple of times, you know, uh, leading the way then and winning the race. Nico Rosberg won the legendary Monaco Grand Prix three times in a row from 2013 to 2015. He takes us for a ride around his home track and tells us about his life, old and new. The biggest day of his international racing career was November 27, 2016. In the last race of the season, he clinched the Formula One Drivers' World Championship. It was the culmination of his international career. When crossing the line, I knew that I was uh, stopping to race because I had thought about it a long time. Uh, three months before already that uh, once I was ahead in the championship I thought wow if I really do manage to win this I think it would be uh, the right moment uh, to move on um, because then I had achieved everything I wanted to and and it was time to uh, to take it another approach to life so I had no idea what I was gonna do after my career um, and just one thing led to the next, you know, and I made a promise that I wanted to do something where I can contribute uh, largely to society, to other people. So Nico Rosberg got involved in Formula E, the new sustainable racing series in which electric racing cars do get out on city tracks around the world. An ideal combination for Rosberg's racing blood and sustainable entrepreneurial spirit. I'm a co-owner of uh, Formula E. And I always found it a pity that around the Formula E races that they don't do more in terms of events. And therefore I thought, hey, why it's such an opportunity, Berlin race, why don't we create this, this uh, te technology festival around the race? In 2019, Rosberg organized the first green tech festival in a hangar at Berlin's disused Tempelhof airport. Big business names from around the world network here with the inventors and makers of green technologies and the future of mobility. It's simply a passion for innovative technologies. That's it. I was able to indulge that in Formula One, and now I can do so in sustainable technologies. It's a minute to midnight and time is running out. It's an exciting time in that field, and as a businessman, it's the field for me and my passion. You still have these innovative technologies, but also this massive positive contribution. It's a win-win. And at the same time, you can do great business. Rosberg has a new passion. He calls himself a sustainable businessman. He has founded a company in Monaco that examines sustainable startups. If a young company convinces him, he invests in their first steps in the world of green business. I really need to feel like enthusiastic when I see a startup, also with the idea that they're pursuing and, and the product that they're making. Like Tier, that's the e-scooters that we see all over Europe now. Uh, another 
really a proud success story in the end. And with Tier, it was a founder who operationally was just absolutely excellent. And that's what it's going to come down to when creating a, a startup and scaling something like uh, an e-scooter startup. Um, and in the end, it proved to be right because operationally it was just phenomenal. In the meantime, the Berlin-based e-scooter maker has established itself as a global market leader with a clever idea. Tier builds its own scooters and developed an innovative energy supply system. When the battery runs down, it can just be replaced on the spot with a charged one. Tier founder Lawrence Leuschner was always open to new and unconventional ideas. So why not sit down with a Formula One world champion to talk about sustainable mobility? I, I had a dinner with him and I was, I was pretty impressed um, how, how he was looking at companies. Yeah? You wouldn't expect from a Formula One driver who's trying to really um, um, be in an extreme sport to really think about companies in that way. Yeah? So I was very impressed um, because he was coming from a very different background. Um, but I really liked it. We had a connection and he, was, uh, he, he said the cities will change. Mobility is changing dramatically. He's a great ambassador for the company, uh, but also in general for the industry of, of green tech and green mobility. My technology festival that I founded last year is on again, so check it out. We have big, big names lined up as well, which I'm really proud of. So EU President Ursula von der Leyen, Google CEO, il mio festival qua questa settimana. So, what should I say? You could say hello, world, hello, audience. Let's go live now to the world. Within just three years, Nico Rosberg turned the Green Tech Festival into an internationally renowned event. In 2021, in addition to the base event in Berlin, there was also a Green Tech Festival in London, presenting the latest in sustainable technologies. Nico Rosberg is going full speed in his second career, too. You have to think fast. He thinks like he used to drive. Totally exciting, to be honest. I have to say, he brings speed to the business. The business world is slow. And the business world doesn't make decisions. The business world doesn't execute. You know, it's blah, 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 all day long. And in F1, if you do blah, 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 you are, you're gone. You will not win. You need to be... Discuss, decide, execute, go, next one. And uh, this is something that I'm bringing to the business world. I am a passenger. Rosberg seems to switch between disciplines without difficulty. As long as it breaks with convention. He shot an advertising clip for Germany's national railway company Deutsche Bahn with rock legend Iggy Pop to promote environmentally friendly travel. And yes, they put me next to Iggy Pop in the commercial. Hey, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there, Iggy Pop naked. And Deutsche Bahn, you have to know, is a very traditional German company owned by the government. And here's naked, um, almost naked, yeah, I mean, top, topless Iggy Pop sitting in the train and us laughing at each other. That was like a first time ever for Deutsche Bahn to take such a, a risk. And he usually gets other sports stars on board for his projects too. Boris Herrmann, for example, who caught the world's attention when he took part in the grueling global regatta Vendée Globe and drew attention to the destruction of the environment. You realize what an opportunity we have because with our sports we have a phenomenal reach. So it's a perfect vehicle to use to generate impact, to encourage everybody who's following us to join the movement with us. Nico Rosberg's name opens doors in sports, business and politics. He has really made a credible conversion in terms of his personal attitude to mobility. We need people whose enthusiasm can help promote technological development and act as ambassadors. He can do that. A Formula One driver can't change the world on his own, but together we can. I like what he does. If you look at everything he organizes, it is really impressive. He uses his fame to do the right thing. A Formula One world champion and his image attract all sorts of prominent participants to the Green Tech Festival. Even pop star Sting showed up. 
blood will flow when flesh and steel are one drying in the color of the evening sun Prince Albert of Monaco was also there along with Hollywood icon Robert Redford the city that I love was like a, a mat that had pulled out from under my feet the European Commission has also thrown its weight behind Rosberg's efforts. We need you to innovate, to liberate the creativity, to stimulate society. Nico Rosberg personally gets in touch with celebrities. Because that's the, that's the way it works. And I have another funny example, so Robert Redford, Robert Redford. And he was like, so who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to backstep a little bit, I had to explain again Formula One and I drive fast in a circle, you know, I used to be the best <laughs> and now I, I switch, I switch and now I'm fighting uh, for our environment. Which is a fight that concerns us all. There's action for the climate, for the planet, for a civilization that has to become more responsible, more sustainable and more innovative. This fight needs Nico Rosberg's talent, energy and determination. Albert, Prince of Monaco, is familiar with Nico Rosberg's talent and determination. The two have been friends for years and worked together on several green projects. They used to tour around the city together in vintage cars. These days, the Formula One world champion likes to take Prince Albert for a spin around town in an electric race car. Straight lane speed limits. Okay, here we go. The brakes okay? Wow! Yep. Yes! <laughs> Flat out down here. Yeah. Breaking at 100 meters. Well done. <laughs> can we see can we see the hand? Shaky or relaxed? <laughs> ah, easy. It's so difficult because you never see the exit of corners. You always drive by memory. You have to be hyper precise. Um, always within five centimeters of the wall at 300 kilometers an hour. And if you're five centimeters too close, you crash. If you're five centimeters too far away, you're too slow. Rosberg has known the racetrack in Monaco since he was a boy. His father, Keke Rosberg, took him to his first Formula One races here. After all, his father is a racing legend too. The Finn, who has been living in Monaco with his German wife, Sina Rosberg, for decades, became Formula One world champion in 1982, driving for Williams. Like father, like son. I want to be a Formula One driver and try to become world champion. My dad was very supportive in my whole career. My mom never saw a single race of mine because she was so scared. But my father supported me all along. At the age of 16, after cutting his racing teeth in go-karts, Nico Rosberg moved up to Formula Junior in 2001 and became champion at the first attempt. We'd like to give you a free test in a Formula One car. I started crying straight away because it's a childhood dream that comes true. I mean, driving a Formula One car was just... Uh... It's just unreal. I was driving a, a, a racing car that had 140 horsepower. And then I went to a car that had 920 horsepower. It's just insane. Rosberg was hired by Williams as a full-time test driver. And in 2006, the team offered him a place as a driver for an entire season. Rosberg Jr. had made it to the top echelons of the sport. I was guiding him as a father. Yeah. And when the moment came, that when I said jump and he said why, then I knew it was time to stop that. So that, I think that was one of my biggest achievement that I let him go exactly at the right moment. Yeah, he was very smart because, you know, um, having a, a father who's done it all, who has the, all the experience already, it's sometimes difficult because, of course, he wants to help you so much, you know, because 
he can tell, he's done, learned it all before, but it can be a bit much sometimes. And so he was very smart that he really accepted to step back totally. And most of the time didn't come to the races anymore. And it really gave me some, a little bit more calm and it allowed me to make my own mistakes and go my own way. In 2010, Rosberg joined the newly founded Mercedes racing team at the side of none other than Michael Schumacher. Soon the checkered flag was being waved for him. In 2014, Lewis Hamilton replaced Michael Schumacher as Rosberg's teammate. And from then on, the two would fight many duels on the racetrack. Duels that would go down in Formula One history. In 2016, Rosberg emerged victorious from the battle of the teammates and got his hands on the World Championship trophy, engraved with all the names of previous winners. The first thing I did when I saw the World Championship trophy yesterday um, was to look, where's my dad, you know, to see him, and that's been uh, amazing. Monaco is Rosberg's hometown. This is where his friends live, his parents, and of course his wife, Vivienne and their two daughters. <laughs> and he still bumps into some of his old rivals. All the F1 drivers are also living here, so we sometimes catch up. When I meet Lewis, we'll talk about Extreme E, actually, because we both have a team now in Extreme E. Um, and we're and we're fighting each other for the championship. Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton have both created their own teams for the new Extreme E Series. Fully electric off-roaders, five races a year in places now synonymous with environmental destruction. From desert regions to the incinerated rainforests of the Amazon basin. The disappearing beaches of Senegal have been the backdrop to a race, as have the melting glaciers of Greenland. to raise awareness of some of the most critical environmental issues facing our planet. But can motorsports really save the world? Or is this just a few Formula One stars looking for a new buzz? One thing is guaranteed, media attention. It's a new challenge for Rosberg to put together a team for completely different racing conditions. It's a great adventure for me because it's very different. Of course, as a Formula One driver, I was the one in driving seat and now I'm a CEO and founder, so I'm looking from the outside. It's uh, Rosberg versus Hamilton 2.0, um, but now as team owners, and we both have, we're both fighting for the wins all the time, and it's very, very close. Again, today it was very close, so this is fantastic, and I think uh, the battle will be great to watch for everybody, hopefully. And of course, the more intense the battle, the more we can raise awareness for the important cause causes that we're racing for, so like climate change and everything. The racing series Extreme E, an ambassador for efforts to tackle climate change and environmental destruction, and even for gender equality in motorsports. 50% of the drivers are women. Each team has a male and a female driver. One takes over from the other halfway through the race. Australia's Molly Taylor is on Rosberg's team. One of the great things about motorsport is that when you put the helmet on, it doesn't matter what gender you are, and that's kind of, I guess, always been my philosophy growing up and competing in rally. Extreme conditions for a racing team whose members have to test the limits and even go past them without ever giving up. What a crazy weekend. I mean, it's extreme, which the name says it all, you know? It's like all over the place. It's so tough out there, the condition. With drivers Molly Taylor and Johan Christofferson, Team Rosberg usually finishes on the podium. Once again, it's a success story written by Nico Rosberg. Nico brings a lot of experience from Formula One and um, just just knowing that, you know how important all those little one percenters are and uh, you know it's great to have his input from you know right at that, that top level and um, having that, that diverse opinion from all different types of motorsport as well. You know I have I have an eye for um, for whatever is going on in motorsports. And by the way we're here now it's called the Loew's Corner, the tightest corner of the year. And um, 
going down the hill here. So it's a very spectacular part of the Monaco racing track. You drive slow, but it's a huge challenge to get it right because, yes, slow, but you can lose so much time or win so much time by doing a fantastic job. Speed is the key. It's about getting where you want as quickly as you can, no matter what the vehicle. For me, especially living in a city like Monaco, it's just the perfect solution. Uh, I mean, going uphill just with such ease, uh, going to, to the office, you know, every other day, just take, jumping on the bike, putting, putting the bicycle right in front of the office. Uh, it's just perfect. Never have to wait for a taxi, uh, never have to wait for, for to find parkings or anything. Some of the biggest hypes in the world are around these e-bike companies because it's just massive potential, this market. And, and their motto is like to get the next billion people onto bicycles. No wonder Rosberg and his company are now investing in e-bike startups too. And his world would not be complete without social media, one of his most important tools to promote sustainable mobility and green autos. Hey everybody, welcome back to Monaco. I am sitting here in the new EQS. Try, try. And go! Be it a new Mercedes or a Tesla, a Formula One driver will always push a car to its limits. Okay. <laughs> oh, big bump, and then now stay right, stay right. Nice balance here on the car. <laughs> And it's fitting that Nico Rosberg has a weakness for electric sports cars. Audi, Porsche, Rematz, or another Tesla? One thing Nico Rosberg always wants to find out in his tests is, is it just as much fun to drive an e-car as one with a combustion engine? And for all of you who have not ever driven an electric car yet, I can tell you that you just really don't even notice the difference. Electric and practical. That's the kind of vehicle Rosberg wants. His firm, TRE, has developed the Mover. It fits into the tightest of spaces. My company developed this whole chassis of this car and uh, we won the Deutsche Mobilitätspreis in 2019. So this is the mover. So now this is the mover with the cabin. We developed the, um, the, the four corner modules and they, can, they have an engine, engine inside the hub, hub and they can spin on its own axis. Rosberg's efforts on behalf of sustainability have also brought new additions for his trophy cabinet. In the fall of 2021, Nico Rosberg was awarded the European Culture Prize in the Environmental Protection category. Thank you. Thank you. This is a proud moment for me. Thank you. Thank you. The award ceremony was held in the Opera Hall in Bonn, just a few kilometers away from the famed Nürburgring, where Nico Rosberg's career in motorsports began. the racetrack Nürburgring where I've um, had so much success in my racing career. The Nürburgring became a rescue center. And right around there was uh, uh, disastrous floods which uh, cost the lives of many and, and ruined, ruined the homes of many. So uh, climate change has really impacted us very close to our hearts now, and, and that's been, I think, very, very alarming. Down the home straight in an electric car, past Saint-Devot, up the hill to the casino, and then back down to Leuve's Corner. Nico Rosberg, always chasing new goals. 
first part of my legacy was being a sporting champion, but now in my second part of my legacy, which is equally important, I really want to do something where where I contribute and I have a and I and I inspire them. You know, I would I would love to inspire my two kids on a similar path of of doing good for society as well, doing good for others. Thank you very much, Boris. You know,